Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm with uh, Vanguard Arms. Uh, we are here bringing you an interesting pistol of the week. Uh, this is actually a revolver uh, and it is an interesting piece indeed. Uh, we had just got this in, uh, came to us from Germany direct. And uh, as you can see, it came in this nice, beautiful case. And I will show you what we have here. Give me one second. All right, so this right here, with the paperwork included, of course, is a very, very interesting and rare Korth revolver. Now, this is not your run-of-the-mill Korth revolver. And what I mean by run-of-the-mill is Korth made a few different models. And, you know, their history is long and very interesting. Just to get into it a little bit, Korth started out, I believe, in the 60s uh, under Willie Korth. Uh, he was a master gunsmith and uh, eventually manufacturer in Germany. He had a very small operation. Um, he started off with making revolvers for a police force, uh, local police forces, and he had a few runs of those. And then he moved his factory to a place called Rotzenberg uh, in Germany. Now, when he moved to Rotzenberg, he kept it very small very boutique. They had very limited pistol productions. And what we'll do in this video, uh, if you look down below, I'll include a link. There's a gentleman by the name of Michael Zeleny, who has done extensive research into Korth and its history. And you can go in there and it shows the production models by serial number, by uh, make, and you know all the details that you would need. Uh, and it also goes into the, the deep dive of the history of Korth. So you can check that out if you want to know some more information. But in general, he made about three different models or four different models. So he had the sport model, which this is actually, it's not considered a sport model, but it has the attributes of a sport model. Now you can tell the difference between a sport versus a combat a few different ways. Uh, one of the easiest ways for me is I look at the front sight. Uh, this is more indicative of a sport model. Now I have another uh, Korth in the back, which we'll bring up for next week. And you'll see that one and that has a uh, combat style front sight. The combat style front sight is just rounded and also the uh, grip on the sports is like this uh, and the on the uh, combat models it is rounded off as well uh, so that's one of the main differences but he would make 357 38 22 and he would throw in certain models like a jubilee or anniversary model uh, he did have some special uh, productions like the one we have in back was produced for a a uh, famous uh, German movie star uh, and producer, and that was custom made for him. So he had some interesting stuff. Now, what makes this piece in particular so interesting is that in 1981, he had sold Korth to a man by the name of Nicholas von Bernstrom, and I may be butchering that name. We will put the proper pronunciation and spelling in the description. And in 81, Bernstrom uh, had taken over the operation and Willie was still involved. He was overseeing all of the production. They had about 30 employees and Willie was there on a daily basis, making sure that all of the weapons were produced up to his standards and how he would have made them himself. So this model in particular was made in this transitional period. So very likely Willie oversaw the making of this particular piece and he was at the factory when this particular piece was being made. Now it's rare, very rare to see one in this finish. Uh, the common finish on these is generally black and blued and those types you don't see these this is in a silver now they have a plasma finish as well that was a short run and they didn't really make it for that long um, this is not a plasma the plasma you can tell by the serial number so this is not one of those but since it is a transitional model it is extra special and something that is sought after by collectors so in 1983, 
Uh, he had sold the factory in 1981. He was there on a daily basis overseeing operations until 1983 when he started to have health problems. When his health problems got to the point where he could no longer go in, he had to stop going to the factory, of course. So uh, this was made again in the beginning of that transitional period. So this piece is from 1981. And as you can see, it comes with the whole package. Uh, they did make it with this beautiful case. And uh, this is everything that it would came with back in 1981. So these are excellent shooting revolvers. I haven't shot this particular one, obviously. It's, uh, it does look like perhaps it was maybe shot a little bit, but it's in excellent condition. There's no scratches, no marks on it whatsoever. It is in absolutely perfect shape. And uh, this, in my opinion, all of these pieces are gonna end up belonging in a museum uh, one day of some sorts. Uh, again, he did not have a large production even after he had sold the company and he was acting as a supervisor. They only had 30 employees. I mean, you look at other weapons manufacturers today, and these are people that have, you know, machines that are doing most of the work for them. There's hundreds of employees on deck. So he had 30 employees, and of those 30 employees, maybe 10 of them were hand producing and hand putting together these revolvers. Now, I spoke to a gunsmith, and uh, he's a very famous gunsmith here in the US. I won't mention his name because. I did not ask him for permission to talk about him, but he told me that these are incredibly difficult to completely take apart and put back together. There are so many moving pieces in here. And actually you can see that when we'll show you the close up of the manual, you can see all the parts that go into this revolver, which is incredible because right, a wheel gun, how simple you know is a wheel gun? It's probably one of the most simple, uh, operating things. They've been making these for hundreds of years. Well, the truth is that, as we know, the Germans, they like to over-engineer stuff and they do a good job at it. So just like anything else, they engineered this to the tops and it has some very interesting mechanisms and all of the work on this is just exceptional. You can feel it in your hand when you hold it when you pop open the cylinder, when you look at it, it's just quality, pure, beautiful quality. And probably my favorite guns ever to be made. That's gonna be our gun of the week. Next week we'll bring you another firearm and we will bring you the history of it. And if possible, we will do a little bit of uh, range time with it as well. So thank you for joining us. I uh, hope you guys liked the video. Hope you learned a thing or two. Like us, subscribe to us, and uh, we look forward to bringing you new interesting content. Thanks.